What's up guys, it's Nick, and welcome back to Freedom Algo. Today we're doing a video on time frames. So time frames are pretty underrated by a lot of day traders because a lot of day traders just wanna look at one chart. And you can do that. You can trade just looking at one chart if you're scalping or whatnot. But I find that time frames can be really useful depending on what you're doing. So if you're scalping the one minute time frame, for example, you're gonna to wanna to know what's going on on the five minute chart over a little bit of time so you have some context. And here's an example. This is a one hour chart. On the one hour chart, you, know, you can see price was kind of moving upward. Over here it was moving sideways. Over here it was moving upward. So if you are finding that on the chart, there's some sort of a trend going on. So let's just say you had drawn your trend line like this on the one hour, but you're trading a 15 minute chart. Well, the 15 minute chart can be really useful, right? Like let's say you're trading this chart, so you don't have this trend right now. And you're just, this is what you see in real time. So let's say this is where price is on the right side of my screen. Well, you would at least have, you know, some sort of idea that we have maybe a trend that's working up like this, something like that. Maybe you could define this as a spike and a channel where the this is actually we had a spike where price spiked way up and then it went into a sideways channel, right? So then we had a channel that started to kind of go like this. Whoops. Started to go something like this. And now we're kind of in a, like maybe an uptrend that we're gonna trade. Well, what's useful is to then open up the one hour and see what's happening on the one hour context, right? Now in our, in our point, that fits pretty well. And yes, it's confirmed in the one hour. But there are times where on the 15 minutes, you can see here, for example, we had this little drawdown and then it went right back up on the one hour. Let's see what it looks like if I draw this, right? A little bit further out on the one hour and why it's important to have some context here. Because at this point, you wouldn't have known this, but this actually, could have been your channel, something like that. But anyway, let's just go back to the 15 minute. On the 15 minute, if you were trading it the way we had it before, so if I go back now, right? Let's go back to where it was, and then let's open up the 15 minute again. Now on the 15 minute, it would have looked like your trend channel was breaking to the downside and you might be looking to go short. However, in the context of this, in the one hour, it was looking like it might have been a larger channel uptrend. So it's good to know what's happening on these time frames and how you can kind of use them and confirm them. Uh, that, that example is just one, but let's get another one here. So let's go back to the hourly. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a basic EMA on here. Uh, what's going on here? Let's get that. Okay. So we're going to get a basic EMA. I'm just going to do a hundred period EMA here. All right. So this is the E mini S and P and I have a hundred period EMA. You could even consider doing a 200, something like that if you wanted to. Uh, so here's a 200 EMA. That's what a lot of traders use. So what you could do is you could be looking on the hourly and say, okay, if the hourly is above the 200 EMA, I'm looking for longs. So in this case, essentially all of this price action in here was above the 200 EMA. So you're looking for longs. So when you're trading on the 15 minute, now knowing that context, when you go back over here, you don't wanna be taking shorts down here, even though they might work. And let me hide this EMA, you know, to me, you know, this this right here, this price action, let's just draw this channel. You do have a channel that was working down that you maybe could have traded depending on how you were playing this. But if we go back into the hourly context, all you were really doing was catching this little this little pullback to the EMA on the hourly. But you were scalping your way down there when in reality, the best move of this point was again let me hide the ema because that's different 
the best move was after this reversal happened and started going up. So if you if you were watching this, if you were watching this play out on the hourly in real time, whoops, totally just did that. If you were watching this play out on the hourly, you would have just seen this as a pullback to the 200 period EMA, where you kind of hung up for a second, and then a big move off of that. So on the larger price action, it was a big move that ended up looking like this. It went way up. And if you were trading this thing, um, if you were trading this thing, you know, and you did get long there, you would have rode this thing way up there. Now let's get another example. Let's get the five minute. I'm gonna delete drawings. I'll keep the indicator. Uh, and I'm just gonna go back in time to a random point just to give us some context. Okay, so here's a downtrend right here. Uh, so this is the 10th of July. We've got this downtrend working, um, right? And so I'm just gonna put the bar replay right there just to, just to lock it in. So right here, big downtrend. We're under the 200 EMA for the most part. You have this one area right here where it was above, this area where it's above. Now let's say you're scalping the one minute. Now on the one minute, there's a lot more price action that's happening. Now I still have the 200 EMA on here. I'm not using the five minute for that, but what I can do just for context is I can say, you know what? I'm gonna change this to a five minute 200 EMA. So now I'm using a multi time frame indicator. So my chart is on the one minute. My EMA is based on the five minute. So now what you can see is those points that we saw when we were looking at the five minute right in there, right there, right in there. If we switch back to the five minute, you'll see those points again. Those are the points where we got above the EMA. Now, one of them was just a wick when you were looking at a five minute chart. So you wouldn't even really consider that one. And then over here, you know, that was a breakout of the EMA, but it ended up just reversing. You know, it just, it just didn't, wasn't a strong move. And then here that was barely, barely closing over it. I mean, you have one green that closed over it, one green couple of reds but nothing that serious so again the multi time frame of understanding the context of the trend being down overall means that you're going to avoid trying to be a counter trend trader now sure when you look back in history you know when you look back in history and i'm not saying you can't ever counter trend trade there are some strategies when you look back in history you can go yeah well what if i caught this trade and then i got this long and went way up it's like okay yeah maybe Maybe that would work, but maybe not. You know, maybe you thought, maybe you thought that that was like the greatest trade ever, but then it's going to get you messed up sometimes. Like you might think, oh, sweet, I have this indicator. Show me a divergence, um, and I am going to go long right here. And then you go long, and you just get wrecked. It just never comes up. And then you're like, oh, I see another move starting. I see another move starting, and you're right here, and you're like, I'm going to ride this thing back to the. <laughs> Back to the EMA. Now, now you end up just riding it sideways, and you end up getting wrecked. So, the thing is, staying with the trend on the shorter time frame that you're scalping, you're just safer to catch shorts on the one minute here. And you can even catch ones that get close to the EMA. There's different ways you could do. It. You could add another EMA and only catch shorts to get closer. Uh, just show you for example. So let's add one more EMA. Just make up a really simple and basic strategy here. Um, I'm gonna just change this one to a 50 period, and I'm also gonna base it on the five minute, right? And I'll just make this one uh, orange for no reason. Okay, so in this case, you get this break below, and right there, pull back to the, right, pull back right near the EMA, perfect place to go short. Because you're below the 200, this is moving down, lower high, take that. So then here, you could just wait, wait till, for these pullbacks. Okay, we're getting close. Now you're not always gonna get a pullback directly to it, but there's some possible shorts in here on these pullbacks. Now, of course, sometimes you're gonna pull back, get into a short, and you're gonna still get wrecked because it does come all the way back up to the 200 here. Now, so that does happen, and you do have to be careful. And still, again, knowing your context here, you're seeing the EMA getting kind of sideways, and then it's starting to point up. You might need to watch and just wait for the price to get a little bit closer before you get into your short again. And after it rejects there and then comes back up, I'd probably be looking for a short here, ride it back to the other EMA. And then after it comes up here and then starts to break below, maybe catch a short back to the EMA again. 
And then right here, when it breaks above and breaks below, boom, you have another short. So there's a lot of shorts that you can take here with the lar larger time frame trend that you're trading in. So that's part of how you can use multiple time frames. There's a lot of other use cases. You know, if you're trading a daily chart, you can look at a four hour chart. If you're trading, or you can look at a weekly chart and trade a daily. You can look at a daily chart and trade a four hour. There's a lot of things that you can do there. And it just helps you with your entries. If you're trading the hourly chart, maybe look at the 15 minute to get good entries. So there's a lot of ways to use multiple time frames. You don't always have to be trading a smaller time frame using a larger one for your context. You can also trade a larger time frame and use a smaller one for your entries. So check it out, try it out. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you soon.